Hey everyone, this is Nitro. Since it's a new week, I'm going to be doing another Nitro setup video. In this video, as always, I'm going to start by covering the equipment farming results of the previous week. Okay, So I'm not going to cover my crystalline voucher status because it's been completely mucked up by the Echoes of Light. right? So I will calculate from here on out, but I won't cover what I had last week. Long story short though, today currently I have 4 vouchers and 913 crystals, so we'll see how much I have next week because I won't be doing any kind of purchases, right, to increase my crystal count unnaturally. Yeah. I should mention though, last week I did get, what, 136 summons into the Ares Maya banner in total. So I did 96 summons on video, then I did 40 more summons. Those 40 summons haven't given me an SSR yet, right? And I also did actually 30 summons on the equipment banner uh, right before it ended. So the Age of Innovation banner, I did 30 more summons there. Um, I think I got two of the armors. So I got every single piece of item, but I didn't get the equipment I wanted, which was the Twilight Star. In any case, so last week's equipment farming, right? Um, I did the monthly purchases of SSR accessory from the store, as well as the two memory shard purchases of accessories, right? Timeless Trial also gave me another accessory, so that was four accessories in total. I was hoping to get the accessories that I wanted. Instead, I kind of got what I feel is garbage. I mean, two of the items I've kept, but the other two were turned into ore. So they were a Slayer's Emblem, an Elven Ring, a Goddess Tear, and a Holy Grail. And of course, I kept the Slayer's Emblem and the Goddess Tear for now. Last week's Weapon Gambles, which I did on Thursday in hopes of getting those new items as well, they were actually pretty good. Um, I actually cannot complain about the accessories I got last week, basically. So it was for the gambles, I got my second Uller's Bow, which I desperately needed. I got a Goddess Left Hand, which creates a, a fifth Goddess Left Hand to level 30 now. I got 100 ore and for the last gamble, for the weapons. Okay? So two items that I've kept there, one of which was a critical item, the Uller's Bow. For the helms, all three were garbage, so I got 300 ore back. As for the armors, I got another Bloodline Magic Armor, which raises my second Bloodline Magic Armor to level twenty, to level 30. A Galaxy Cloak, which is actually my ninth one to start building up. I don't know if I'm going to build that one up, but we'll see. And then finally, 100 ore. So, good items from the Gambles, right? Uh, at least two of them are relatively useful. And the other two, Goddess Left and a Galaxy Cloak, I'll keep and wait and see. As for the Daily Dragon and Joint Battle items, also can't really complain there, okay? I got a Spirit Griever, which raises up another one to level 30 potentially. I think I actually ended up oaring that, because I don't plan to raise up the Spirit Griever. So I have one copy of level 20 Spirit Griever, long story short. I got a Bloodsword Hunting, but I don't need Bloodsword Huntings anymore, so I turned that into ore. And I got a Demon Slayer from the Joint Battle. This is my first Demon Slayer, so now I can actually consider using Leonhard. Consider, because I actually don't have Apex Boots. But the fact that I finally got a Demon Slayer is definitely useful for potentially future characters like Sakura and so on. For Tuesdays, I got a Galaxy Cloak, and I used that Galaxy Cloak to make my 8th Galaxy Cloak to level 50. That's why the Gambled one was the ninth one at level 20. Okay, And I also got a Death Stroke from a world map event, which is 100 ore. Wednesday gave me two more items. Keep in mind that I got three dailies on Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday, right? So it kind of helped. And Wednesday, I got a Twilight Helmet, which was ore, and my second Soul Stealer Headdress, okay? Haven't figured out a use for this second Soul Stealer Headdress yet, but it's always useful to have a spare in case I actually end up needing it. Thursday, two battles, gave me a Tierra, ore. Friday, the armor one, gave me another Bloodline Magic Armor, which raises my second Bloodline Magic Armor to level 40 a mirror armor, which was ored, and a gargoyle jacket, which was also turned into ore. And then Saturday gave me a Fury of Tear, my eighth one. I know some people are desperate to get Fury of Tears. I have eight of them. <laughs> I really don't know what to say about that. Like, I've been getting a Fury of Tear every single week, pretty much, since the banner, almost. Well, no, not really. I mean, I got three off the banner, and I got five since the banner. So it's kind of insane how many Furies of Tear I want. They're not what I want, <laughs> honestly speaking, but I keep getting them. And finally, Sunday gave me a last night from the two daily runs. Last but not least, I did four random accessory box purchases, and out of those four, I got a true cross. 
So in total, I got five SSR accessories, none of which are the ones I need. So about the gear I need then, there's actually not very many items I need now, as you can see, okay? Weapons, there's two of them that I need. Helmets, there's one. Armor, there's one. And accessory, there's four, okay? For the weapons, I just need more extreme magic bows for Hiei, Joshua, and Zerida, and a Mimir's War Axe for Yusuke. Really, I just need two extreme magic bows at this point because of either of Hiei and Joshua, right? I don't actually have Joshua built, so effectively, I just need one extreme magic bow. Just for Hiei, right? Yusuke, pretty straightforward. Mimir's War Axe. So weapons, there's only two I need now, but they are pretty much must-haves in my opinion. So it's going to be rough there. For helmets, I just need Tenyo's headdress. The problem with this though is I need as many Tenyo's headdresses as I can get. I currently have four and I could use more. Like literally one for every healer, demon, or mage class character that you use. So it's tough, right? As you guys saw, I keep getting uh, I keep getting tier uh, fury of tier instead of these. So <laughs> I don't know what to say about that. Armor-wise, all I need now in the armor section is the last rates. And not too much else to say about that. I mean, every single flyer and assassin wants a last rates if you if possible. I currently only have 4. So, I'm on the hunt for more of these last rates for sure. As for accessories, well, accessories is really the ones that you can't really farm or anything, so it's very RNG dependent because you get one every single week from Timeless Trials. You might be able to get some from random accessory boxes and then you get one SSR from uh, every month. And I think that's pretty much the only way to get these accessories other than events. So it's pretty rough. Um, but yes, these are the ones I need. Twilight Star, You, what I feel is you need at least two. In my case, I need one for Illustrial and one for Diharto. I already have one, so I just need one more. Right? Other characters who can use the Twilight Star are like, you know, I mentioned it before, like Sonya, Akaya, and any character who does single target strikes for you so that they can do some fixed damage before combat begins. Right? Um, so it could be, let's say, I don't know, let's say you have a single target young Jessica, right? She could use one of these because it gives instant attack and it allows her to do fixed damage before combat begins, you know? Of course, if she's you doing AoE attacks, you don't want her to have a Twilight Star, but it doesn't hurt because it still provides a 75 int bonus. Moving on, Juggler Plushie can be used by three characters in my opinion, Liana, Iris, and Tiaris. I currently have just one of those. Swordsmith Metal. Swordsmith Metal can actually be used by five characters, okay? And they are Listel, Bozel, Landius, Juggler, and Luna. So there's five characters who could benefit a lot from the Swordsmith Medal. I currently just have one. So that's one. That's probably the item I'm most desperate for. And finally, Apex Boots. Apex Boots can be used by pretty much any infantry or lancer class character. Literally. So that's like Bernhard, Elwyn, Leonhard, Reen, Sakura, Shalinka, and <laughs> yeah. So really, off the top of my head, I listed six characters. I think Betty is another infantry character, so that makes seven. So theoretically, you could use seven. Realistically, maybe two or three, depending on your party, right? Because the most likely, most likely, you'll have, let's say, Reen, Sakura, and maybe Shalinka or Leonhard in your party. So at most, you would need three of these Apex Boots, but theoretically, you could have seven and have them equipped on all those characters. And these are all the accessories. These are the accessories I need, you know? Uh... Yeah, gear-wise, I don't know what I'm gonna do with regards to farming the uh, random random gambling every single week because you know, there's a few items in every category I need right now, but they're hard to get. So we'll see about that. So with that covered, let's jump into the game and talk about my account. So first, let's talk about spendings. So unless I get another sponsorship, there is no way I am going to be spending anything right now, except for maybe purchasing the Clock of Forgiveness. So. There are no plans whatsoever to have you know, unnatural crystal increases and so on, right? There is still two days left on this daily discount gift pack. So I will get, I guess, 300 additional crystals from that because last Wednesday, I purchased the six day purchase of it. But after this wears out, that's it. No more purchases unless sponsorship occurs. Next, other than that though, um, 
in terms of my in terms of the events okay well i'm moving along through the strange traveler event as you guys have been seeing you know get getting the missions done whenever they appear i've done three of the missions so far i'm kind of surprised about this event it almost seems like it could be a secret realm event instead of a world map event maybe it's because they didn't decide to build make any challenges for it that they decided to make it a world map event so it'll just be some world map easy battles and then there's no challenge battles so i i have to assume that's the case otherwise it doesn't make sense for it to be a world map event in general right uh in terms of the magic tower conquests well for this first week i have finished up all of the missions for the first cycle right so i'm just waiting for the second cycle to continue with this um in terms of the feats moving along pretty well right 14 towers destroyed so far out of the 35 that you need to do um in terms of victories i'm at 12 out of the 20 that you need to do so that's on track 1500 conquest points i'm at 1317 so i'm going to hit 1500 for sure as well so those three feats are mostly covered over the next few weeks it's the one that may be a struggle is to eliminate 400 enemy heroes in matched battles right that's going to take time for sure right first week i got 104 you'll pretty much have to do 133 every single week so i'll have to get a few more matches in for this don't really want to but in order to stay on track and finish this event by the 25th I'm going to have to do that so i might get some more matches in this week just to get as much of that done as possible shard farming wise so far last week we got we still had the 18 gate of fate event so i was farming didlit diharto hiei Gizaroth and Yusuke, five characters. The final few runs were going into just unlocking characters, so it really, really helped. And on Thursday, where the Ares and Maya banner occurred, I was still busy farming up Deedlet, so I didn't start working on Ares until Saturday. Nonetheless, the end result is that Deedlet is now six stars, Diharto is at 100 out of 150, Hiei is at 40 out of 100, Gizaroth is at 43 out of 100. Yusuke 132 out of 150 and Ares 16 out of 50. As for whether I'll continue to farm up Diharto or hope to get an off banner of him, we'll wait and see, right? I'm not really in a rush to bring Diharto up to 6 stars, and he's currently reasonably usable even at 5 stars, so I will just continue to use him as is for now. Ares, so after since then, I'm going to be focusing on Ares, Hiei, and Yusuke this week. Although Yusuke will also finish up by Saturday, so he will hit 6 stars as well. So the new character I'm going to add, which is highlighted in red, will be Gizaroth, right? And I'll be doing 3 runs of Gizaroth on Sunday, so he'll reach 46 out of 100 shards. So from that week on, I will be farming up Ares, Hiei, and Gizaroth. So that will occur for 2 more weeks until Saturday, June the 27th, where Hiei will hit 5 stars at that point. With a 5 star Hiei, I don't think I'm going to need to raise him up to 6 stars, so instead I'm going to transition to farming up Lanford for a few days, right? So Lanford will get farming for 5 days. And the reason I'm going to farm Lanford for 5 days is so that his shards are at 31 out of 50. This puts him within range of having 50 shards, because on July 9th, that should be the couple's banner right? Uh, it's this Chinese Valentine's event. We have it occur in the summer as a couple's banner. And if I have 50 shards of Lanford there, I can trade those 50 Lanford shards for 60, for 50, uh, for 60 Mystery Knight shards. So that's why I'm farming up Lanford shards in advance, right? If I have those shards and I get a CP token, I can trade it and then get some extra shards of Mystery Knight, either unlocking her or getting extra shards of her to raise her up towards five or six stars. So that's the plan for, that's why I'm getting those Lanford shards, right? So in the meantime, it will be Ares and Gizaroth. And then on Thursday, that will be the Elusia and Shalinka banner, where I'm going to draw for one hero, right? I'm leaving it open for now because if I get Shalinka, I'm probably going to start farming up Shalinka. If I get Elusia, then I'm going to probably continue to farm up Lanford shards instead so that I will have 50 shards of Lanford or whatever, 
right? So that's kind of a wait and see situation. But my plans up to uh, July the 2nd are set in terms of shard farming. Like my plans for this whole month in terms of shard farming is completely set. So I don't have to worry about that. So this brings me to the next part of this video, which is, of course, the gambling. Now, in terms of gambling, I'm actually very, very low on Aura Calamore. I have 645 on hand right now. And I really do have to purchase the five gift packs for better enchants as well. So I'm actually not sure how what to gamble on at this time. In large part as well because I am currently upgrading gear too, right? Uh, for example, I need to finish up Gizaroth's Scepter of Destruction and that needs 300 ore to buy a Epic Martial Spirit for it, right? So I'm currently, I'm probably going to be doing less gambles for the next few weeks as I try to get the gear that I really want to upgrade finished up, right? Like, as I mentioned, there's Gizaroth, right? I may have to build up a few more Scarlet Reapers shortly. Um, you know, maybe upgrade some more Furies of Tear. There's the Demon Slayer that I would want to raise to level 50. Hiei has a Flower Boon Bonnet that needs to be raised to level 50 as well. You know, so there's a bunch of gear that I'm currently focusing on leveling up. And so gamble-wise, I'm going to be doing less for the next few weeks. So actually, I'm probably going to skip the gambling at this time. Yeah. If I get a lot of SSRs this week, I may end up gambling, and in which case I'll report the results in next week's video. But right now, I'm not doing any of the gambles. Yeah. I'd rather, li I'd re literally rather buy two Epic Martial Spirits right now, so I have a level 50 uh, hat on Hiei and a level 50 Scepter on Gizaroth. Okay, so... And in terms of the Memory Shard usage, Right, I currently have 11,345 memory shards even after doing the SSR accessory purchase. That's because I did uh, some summons on the Ares Maya banner. Right, I was summoning on this banner and I summoned 136 times, in fact, for one SSR. Really don't know how I feel about that. You know, at least it was Ares. You know, I know a lot of people are struggling to get a copy of Ares or they got tons of Mayas or whatever. So at the end of the day, you know, I more or less got what I wanted. It would have been nice to get a copy of Maya as well, but I'm satisfied overall. And I'm going to be saving up draws instead. So no additional summons will be done on this banner. Moving on then. So, since there was just a major update, let's take a look at the Hero Gallery, right? Because there should be a change to at least one of the pages, which is the Reincarnation page. So currently, there is now a new Reincarnation page. I do have Ares, but Maya is grayed out because I don't have a copy of her, and I won't get a copy of her for quite some time. So the other ones are pretty much as is, right? They haven't changed at all. I have all the characters for Languister. Okay, so I have all the characters for Languister 5 because it got reinforced, right? I have all the characters for Languister 4. I have all the characters for Languister 3. All the characters for Languister 2. And all the characters for Languister 1. Okay. Oh, they've separated the mobile section too. So the mobile sections for Chapter 2, I am missing Mystery Knight, but I plan to get her in the couples banner. That's this. That's in July, right? So. She will be reached. I will get her next month. As for the Langrisser Mobile Chapter 1, well, I'm missing Emilia. And I know Emilia does appear in a future Destiny Summon banner, so that's when I'll get Emilia. Right. As for the crossover galleries, I mean, we've covered them before, but Record of Lodos War, everybody. The Yu Yu Hakusho banner, I don't have the Togoro Bros, and I don't ever plan to get them. Sakura Wars, everyone. And Trails in the Sky, everybody. Right. Alright, so what is next to cover? Gear and equipment changes, it's really just building up new sets rather than upgrading existing sets. Well. I should mention, I've tried re-rolling a bunch of enchants to get some better rolls on some of this stuff. It didn't work out very well. Uh, and I'm probably, I realized I really do need to change this mirror armor up 
for a Bloodline Magic Armor. So I have enchanted one for Lendius. So this Bloodline Magic Armor currently has 4 magic defense, 11% defense, 5% attack. And he's going to equip that up. And we'll see how it goes. I'm also considering changing Landius from his current Thorn set to a Full Moon set. But in order to do so, I would need to get a Swordsmith Medal for my Landius. So unless I get a Swordsmith Medal, I'm not going to make such an extreme change. Okay? If I have a Swordsmith Medal, I'll probably roll the Full Moon on that Swordsmith Medal. Then, you know, I can easily roll a Full Moon scroll on another Fury of Tear. You know, I have a, so many of these that I can make one a Full Moon Enchant. And then in terms of an armor, I do have two Bloodline Magic Armors, right? So I could replace the enchant on one of these to make it full moon as well. And then finally, for the weapon, the Dragon Slayer Gram, that's actually not, that's probably the easiest one because I have three Dragon Slayer Grams sitting here right now. So I could make this into level 40 Dragon Slayer Gram and can very easily upgrade that to level 50. So if I need to build a full moon set of gear for Landius, it's I don't have to re-roll any of these enchants. I simply have to build a new set, which is a nice advantage because I won't be wasting all my previous rolls. So we'll see about that. But until I, as I said, until I get a Swordsman Medal, that's absolutely not happening. And other than that, you know, as I mentioned, it was building new sets of gear. So for example, Hiei currently has a set of gear that's pretty well built. He's, he's taken pieces of equipment from Zerida for now, right? So Zerida has taken a, a Slayer's Emblem and a Bloody Melody, and then Hiei has gotten the Extreme Magic Bow and so on. Just various adjustments in terms of the gear, which is fine. Uh, I would like to get another Extreme Magic Bow so that you know Zerida can have one, but for now, this works fine too. And then, you know, Gizaroth is building up a new set with full moon enchants here. I will probably replace the Holy Ring with something else, but that's going to be a wait and see because I'm not sure what to give him for the last item at this time. Maybe a Star Earring could work for better protection against Assassins and Archers. That's a very, very viable option, right? So that will likely be it. Probably replace the Holy Ring with a Star Earring, but no rush for that. And finally, this last set of gear that I built is for Ares, right? And Ares has a Scarlet Reaper set built. It's just not on him right now because he is in his infantry class at this time and he needs to be Flyer to equip it. So it looks like this, right? For now, Scarlet Reaper, King's Crown, which needs to be upgraded to level 50. So once again, why I need more Epic Martial Spirits, right? Uh, Judge's Talisman, and then currently a Monkey King's Vest on this, but I that's because I lack last rights, right? I mentioned how almost every single flyer and assassin wants last rights. So last rights is probably the piece of gear that I want the most right now to enhance the survivability of a lot of the characters that I use. But we'll see about that. At the end of the lay, I kind of expect Ares to be like a suicide striker. He runs in, you know, launches out some AOEs and whatnot, and then probably gets killed by the enemy. So if I don't get a last rights for him yet, it's okay. It's not the end of the world. Especially when I don't have Maya to unlock his defense bond. So yeah, building up more sets of gear. So that is the gear adjustments that I'm making, better than upgrading existing sets. And that is why my gold is constantly running low. Currently have 1 million gold on hand, but it'll disappear fast. What else is there to cover at this point? Not too much. I mean, I made, I did do a few adjustments in terms of class masteries. For example, because the Twilight Star now exists, I have converted my Liana back to her holy class so that she, her Shrine Maidens will fully protect her, right? They won't, she will not get fixed damage before combat begins ever. So that's one other adjustment I made. And um, yeah, in terms of the training ground, I. I'm not sure I did anything. I might have done that one upgrade on the Flyer and Aquatic Training Ground, so it's at 68% attack. You know, the, the last one, I actually have enough crazy Shorts and Brown Essential Oils for. I just don't have the Epic Breeding Material books yet. But I'm actually not interested in farming up this Flyer Training Ground at this time either. So it will stay at 68 for quite some time. I don't think a 2% difference will make, will have an impact of allowing the Flyer Soldiers to kill off 
enemies that they can't, so leaving it at 68 is okay. Yeah. I'll get that upgrade eventually. No rush for it. And other than that, you can see that all three, all four of these training grounds now pretty much have 70% attack at long last. So my priority focus right now is first, in the Holy and Demon training ground, I'm finishing up this tech. When Holy Units is above 80% hit points, damage dealt is increased by a certain percentage. Right? It's currently at 19, I believe it caps out at 30%. So I'm upgrading this primarily for the Zealots that Yusuke uses. So that's the tech I'm currently focused on finishing up. Once that one is done, I will have to consider. Maybe I'll level up Crystal Warlocks, but that assumes that I fully level up this training ground, like the defense and hit points ones, right? More likely, I'm going to finish up the Cavalry training ground, you know, upgrade the de defense training, upgrade the hit points here, so that the Unicorns are very tough, and so are the Royal Cavalry, and so are Templar Knights, which is what I'm probably going to level up next. Templar Knights for Landius. Right? And also, doing all of these upgrades would also benefit the Bone Dinos that I'm also upgrading too, because Bone Dinos, after all, can be used by various characters. Taking a look here, you know, Illustrial uses Bone Dinos. Sakura can use them, you know, Akaya can use them. There's a Sonya uses them in particular, if I ever move her into my party. Leon can use them for extra damage. So there's a whole bunch of characters that I may end up using that use Bone Dinos, so I'm upgrading those at long last. And they just currently need one more Devout Gloves to upgrade. So yeah, that's my current focus. Cavalry Training Grounds. After I finish the Cavalry Training Grounds, then I'll have to decide which Training Grounds to do. It might be Holy and Demon, might be Lancer, might be Infantry. And I'm just going to quickly collect the rewards here and send out a new expedition. Before moving on to talk about what's there's only a few things left to cover in this video at this point. Um, the One of them is, of course, the status of my SR characters rather than the SSRs, right? And at long, long last, it took, what, 12 plus f 16 and a half months, okay? It took me 16 and a half months, but all the SSRs that can be gotten by drawing are done. So the 130 draws that I did on the banner last week, the Ares Maya banner, did finish up Serena, who was the last SSR that you don't need to farm. So the only SSR I have left that would need to be upgraded would be the collaboration SSR SRs, right? For example, Pirates, right? Kazuma Kurabara, Parn, and Iris. Those four are the only remaining SRs that are not at 6 stars. So, wow, Iris is all the way up here at 7,000 power. So, you know, for them, I'd only level them up if their event reruns, because that way they can get another 150 shards. You know, Kazuma Kurabara would be completed. Parn and Pyrotes would not be completed, but it is what it is, right? I maybe, I'll, actually, I. Maybe I'll farm them up, maybe not. Actually, I think Pyro Test will actually complete if her event reruns, but Parn won't. No. But yeah, there's too many SSRs that I need to farm shards of. There's no way I'm going to do these SRs as a result. Nonetheless, with that, I am now at 52 out of 55 for owned 6-star heroes. So it's moving pretty rapidly towards having 55 6-star heroes, in fact. And actually, interesting to note as well is in six days, so by next week, I will have logged in for 500 days in total. So that will give me another 10 Trinity Vouchers. Bonus, right? As for the last three heroes to reach six stars, I'm not sure that's going to be occurring anytime soon. Um, I mean, I'm going to finish Yusuke this week, which puts me at 53, right? But Hiei is only going to get grinded up to 100 to 5 stars. So I'm going to probably be stuck at 53 heroes for quite some time. Getting it up to 6 stars, I just don't see it happening anytime soon. There's no characters that are very, any that are close to being brought to 6 stars at this time. The closest is arguably Ashram. 
but I realize I just don't have time to actually farm Ashram up to 6 stars, so I, he's going to be left at 5 stars, just like so many other heroes. Yeah. If I were to focus on getting those 10 Trinity vouchers though, it would probably be finishing up Ashram and actually finishing up Leonhard, who is at 78 of 150. But neither one interests me at this time, you know. Un in particular, unless I get an Apex Boots, Leonhard is useless. And as for Ashram, unless I, well, unless I get like last rights and so on, <laughs> lots more last rights, I'm not going to build him up either. And that's it. So thanks for watching, guys. I hope you found this video interesting or useful to you. I've been improving these videos, although they've been taking a lot more time to do. And on that note, Nitro out.